So in this class, I am going to discuss discrete Fourier transform and fast Fourier transform. So and last for year transform okay so let's start with uh, recall uh, dtft okay we had a dtft that x of e j omega uh, x of g e omega j omega equal to summation x of n e to the power minus j omega n and omega varies uh, omega varies from minus pi to pi okay and um, minus pi to pi and its inverse dtft is x of n 1 divided by 2 pi minus pi to pi is your integration. So, and then x e to the power j omega e to the power j omega and g omega, okay? However, there is a problem with uh, calculating this way is that um, they are computationally inefficient. They have following computational disadvantage. Number one, that omega varies continuously. Okay, so discrete time Fourier transform is a continuous function, even though the time discrete time signal is discrete. So continuously from minus pi to pi. Okay, number two, and and so so first the computing here. Uh, computing okay, computing x of e j omega needs to account for uncountable uncountable number of frequencies okay then number 2 inverse dtft requires an integration requires an integration okay which cannot be implemented as it is on a computer okay so we always implement int integration as a discrete sum. And so just by itself, it's not a very good representation and it's not a very efficient um, like form for computer implementation. And so in this case, hence, we need something else. If we wanna use this Fourier uh, series, Fourier, transform, okay, which is your DFT, this read for your transform, okay, which is discrete in both time, and frequency domain, okay? So DFT is computed at discrete frequencies, 
and inverse DFT does not require integration. Okay. And then further, the development of the DFT, the development of the DFT is based on representation, based on the representation of periodic periodic discrete time signals and taking advantage of the fact that both both the signal and its Fourier coefficients are periodic with periodic with the same fundamental period. Okay. So in this case, Fourier coefficients and signals both have the same period. And so in this case, let's see. Um, so, so if frequency is discretized, and we have k omega zero harmonics. Okay. Then x of k equal to x of e j omega zero. So just write like this. J k omega zero. So we are writing this as a discrete version. E is equal to some x of k and e to the power minus j omega 0 n equal to sum and we assume also that omega 0 equal to 2 pi n where n is a fundamental period so this becomes x of n e to the power minus j 2 pi small k small n divided by capital n okay And, and and inverse one becomes e to the power one divided by n summation x of a e to the power j two pi k n divided by n and k equal to zero to n minus one. Okay. This is what we have. So in this case, we this is what we call as your um, discrete Fourier transform. Also one thing here that here also n equal to zero to n minus one. Um, Okay. Um, so this two pi j is equal to n equal to zero, so n minus one. Okay. So both um, in frequency domain as well as in the time domain, uh, both will have the same period, and this is how we will be calculating. Okay. So uh, this is what we have as. Um, 
Now let's look at DFT of a periodic discrete time signal so we can obtain the DFT of an a periodic signal y of n by sampling in frequency it's d t f t y of e j omega so even if the signal original signal is a periodic we can first determine its discrete time Fourier transform and then sample in in, in, in and then sample in its frequency and so let omega k equal to 2 pi small k capital L k to L minus 1 k is um, k is no, k is 0 to L minus 1 0 to L minus 1 as the sampling frequency sampling frequencies okay and L L needs to be determined depending on on the need so whatever you need depending on that we will be uh, choosing the value of l and so sampling in frequency generates a periodic signal in time so this is what happens when you sample a free sampling in frequency will generate periodic signs, which we can write as a y tilde summation or equal to minus y n plus small r capital L. Okay. And so if y of n is of finite length n then then when l is greater than n uh, the periodic extension basically periodic version of y periodic extension y of n uh, displays displays the first period the first period in this case equal to the given y n with some geo attached uh, attached to the end when l is greater than n and so attached to the end when so what it means is that we will be basically with zero padding and so if l is less than n then the first period of y tilde n does not coincide with y of n because because of superposition of shifted 
versions of it. Okay, so this like that, this will what happen. So this is aliasing. So this is what will happen. Okay, so this corresponds to time aliasing. Okay. Time aliasing, which which is the dual of frequency aliasing in time sampling. So remember, we have Nyquist sampling theorem that we have to have certain sampling period so that we do not have a aliasing in the frequency domain so which is this whole thing is basically a dual of that so y of k equal to y then e to the power j 2 pi k l In this case, y of n equal to, oh, sorry, uh, this will be the capital Y, capital Y, which is your Fourier representation, Fourier series coefficient, to summation n minus 1, and n equal to 0, y of n, e to the power minus j, 2 pi, small n cap, divided by n zero less than k less than n minus one. So this will result in y of n equal to one by l summation into the power j two pi n k divided by l zero n less than n minus one. And so if L is greater than n, we pad y of n with zeros to avoid prime aliasing. We do not need to consider L less than n. Okay, so that's what we have. That's how you're going to calculate. Um, that's how your DFT of the of periodic times a discrete time signal. Now let's look at first for your transform. First for your transform. So, um, if we have an n signal samples, so DFT, the DFT of n signal samples, x of n is x of k into summation n minus 1, n equal to 0. small n e to the power minus j 2 pi divided by n a small n k equal to 0 1 2 dot 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 n minus 1 okay then let us and uh, let's assume w n equal to e to the power minus 2 pi divided by n okay that's what we are Assuming in this case, so this is what we also, we will have a, a special name for this, which is called as a Tweedle factor. And so Wn is Tweedle factor. So Wn k n equal to e to the power minus 2 pi n j n k 
and hence hence x of k equal to summation n minus one n equal to zero x of n w n capital n okay and so the directly direct dft computation is very expensive the computation is very expensive and requires an square additions and multiplications okay. however we have however we have an efficient algorithm or a method algorithm called first Fourier transform which requires an order of n by two log to n additions and multiplications okay and so we have past Fourier transform So the main idea, the main idea behind FFT is that endpoint DFT can be written as Weighted sum of two n divided by two point DFTs. And so x of k equal to summation n by two minus one n equal to zero is small to n to two k n plus w and k summation n by 2 minus 1 x of 2 and my n plus 1 w n by 2 k n okay so this one is your even samples this one is your odd samples okay and and this whole thing is n by two point DFT. And this whole point is n by two point DFT. Okay. And so each each n by two point DFT is only evaluated for k equal to 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, n by 2, minus 1. Because w n by 2 k is periodic with the period n by 2. Okay. So that's what we have in this case. And so this can be represented as see uh, in this case we can represent as uh, here we have four point DFT and another one four point DFT. Let's see we have okay. 
And so X of zero, X of one, X of, sorry, even, so even samples first. So X of two, X of four, X of six. So let's also consider that this whole example is your N equal to eight, okay? And here it will be x equal to one, x equal to two, so three, x equal to five, and x equal to seven. Two. Then we will draw some lines. So let's see. Okay. This is for x zero. This is for x1. Okay. Okay. This is for x2. And this is for x. G. Similarly, x0, x1, oh, sorry, not x0, x4. Then this is x5, x6, and x7. Then we will have the weights is specified so we can specify the weights as um, we specify the weights okay so this dots will be summation okay and we will have the weight here written as W eight four. And then similarly, this weight is for this line, and then we will have so this weight is for this line W eight zero. Okay, and then we will have W eight one. And W eight five. So remember in this case so in this case we will have the fixed value of the K and then this will be the dividend. And so Six, two, and then the red one. Um, let's say this. Three. And from from seven. Okay, so we will have like this. So in this case, generally we are considering W and K M, and for this, K is one. So W and N equal to eight, and so in this case. Uh, Yes, okay, k is zero, and then we will have a n that will vary, right? So that's why n and n will be changed. So this is what we have in this case. Okay, and so just to specify the dots in the diagram, 
is summation and W8K are called Twiddle factors that is multiplied with value passing through the lines. Okay. And so if we have to show for one unit, like for one unit, okay, we could write like this. Mm. Okay. And so what we have in one and two out one out two which is equal to in one plus w so let's specify this uh, w and m and this will be w and m plus n by w n m plus n divided by 2. Okay. So this is what we will have. m plus n by 2. And so out 2 will be in one plus oh wait I didn't complete this okay in two and w n plus n divided by in two so this is what we will have oops this is what we have for one unit and so I hope this is clear that how this overall is going so uh, This whole thing, this whole thing is called butterfly structure. This whole thing is called this is a butterfly structure. Um, so let's look into the more detail. So this decomposition or this decomposition of of length DFTs can be further broken into half again and again until we have two point DFT. Okay. So also to cut this to, you know overall this process which is also a kind of a bigger class of algorithm called the divide and conquer algorithms and so in this case we also have uh, some structure or some properties of the trivial factors that we take into account so we also exploit some properties of Twiddle factor to make calculation simpler, make calculation simpler. Okay. That is WN small n equal to WN. Okay, because it's periodic. 
and and then we have another property uh, so, okay so either it's it can be any of these uh, or w n small n k plus capital n so and then and w n small n star equal to w n okay you can have both which star is your uh, nothing but complex conjugate we also we can illustrate them on a circle so let's see we have a circle And so here we write W and zero. Uh, w and one, W and two, which is this, W and three, W and four, W and five, W N six and W N seven. Also, which is equal to W N three plus four equal to minus W N three, based on the property of. And so you could note down that here is a half circle, half circle rotation. Okay, so. Uh, Rotation by n by 2 causes negation. Just note down that. Okay. And so, plus WN M plus n by 2 equal to minus WN M. Okay. And so, our butterfly structure is simplified is simplified. So we write like this. So for this uh, multiplying factor is W N M and here our multiplying factor is w m plus n by 2 equal to minus w n m right and then here we had in one in two out one out two which becomes simplified as as so in one in two out one out two and here it becomes so here we write as w and m multiplying factor so this goes here right so it will multiply and here we have multiplying factor again minus one okay so this will look like this Okay, so then you could write down this as in one plus w and m in two, and this would be in one minus w and m in two. Okay, so this would be like this, and so overall our structure becomes so 
So four points DFT for eight points. X of one, X of two, X of three, X of five, X of seven, X of seven, then we will have four lines again. Okay, and then this will be Okay. And here, then your rating factors will be um, WH0. And here, we will have minus one. Then WH1. And here, we will be minus one. Then WH2. And here, we will be minus one. And W eight three and here will be minus one. Okay. And then output will be X of one X of two X of three X of four X of five X of six X of seven. Um sorry. It just starts with zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, X of seven. Okay. So we can also look into the more details, but you see that every after every uh, half, after making after dividing the sequences into half, like the events and odds, events go one side or um, odd goes to other side, we will have the sequence of getting scrambled. So currently you see this, and if you have to divide this again, then this would become um, two point DFT would become like this, two point DFT. So it would be X zero, and x four, then two point again. X of two, x of six, okay, and then here two point DFT. X of one, x of five, and then again. X of three, x of seven. So you see that. In order to get a correct sequence for your um, transform, we need to scramble the input in some way. And so, but, um, so you see, we have then these four points got, got into the two point DFT. So basically, we have and we have something like this. This is this whole thing is your. 4 point DFT and this will be X0, X2, X4, sorry, yeah, X4 and X6. And then similarly, this whole thing, 
will be a four point DFT. So X one, X three, X five, X seven. And so if we look inside each of this, so it will look like this. So let's assume that eight point DFT can be broken down into three stages. Okay, so eight point and if it's 16, four points, so how many stages? The log to eight equal to three, okay, the stages. Uh, then with some shuffling of the input signal, okay. So let's that in this case x in is the one that is already shuffled. Okay. So we could write like this x of n zero equal to x of zero x of n one equal to x of four. So you see x of four. Then x of n two equal to x of two, x of n three equal to x of six, x of n four equal to x of one, x of five equal x of n five equal to x of five, which is just a coincidence in this case, x of n equal to x of three and x of n equal to x of 7. Okay. So let's do the two-point DFT first. So in two-point DFT, we have, so here we have minus 1 and w8, 0. Okay, so in this case, it will just be 1. You can do the calculation to find out. Okay, W8, 0, here minus 1. Then minus 1, W8, 0. Okay. Then uh, the next stage, so the next stage, okay. next stage, okay, so this will be multiplied by this and Okay, so here we will have uh, W8 0 minus 1, W8 2 minus 1. Okay, and similarly, we'll be having this. Minus 1, minus 1, W8 0. Don't do it too. Okay. Now the last stage. Okay, so the last stage is this one. We we'll multiply here. And this one here. And like this, okay. So for this, it will be W zero, 
W eight one, W eight two, and W eight. Uh, this one, I think still have to write like this. Um, okay. Yeah. So W eight. G and then minus one, minus one, multiplying factor, minus one. Okay. So this is your overall. And at the end, we will collect X0, capital X0, capital X1, X2, capital X3, capital X4, capital X5, capital X6, capital X7. Okay. So that's all we have. And so in uh, so similarly, similarly, inverse FFT can be can can be calculated by recognizing that N O x star which is your con complex conjugate summation n minus k equal to zero capital x star k w n k okay and x star n is the complex conjugate of x of n okay so that's it and reading material refer to the textbook section eleven point four point five. Okay, that's all. So that's all for the fast Fourier transform. Thank you very much.